They show you weather satellites from the poles during the summers and show the ice shrinking as it's always done for thousands of years with the northern and southern passages that were even documented in the time of the Vikings. They lie to people and say that penguins cannot swim in the Antarctic and that in the Arctic polar bears are dying even though National Geographic has to admit polar bear numbers are up five-fold since the 1950s and are now invading areas not previously known to be in their range. But that doesn't matter. Obama said you could keep your doctor. Then he said he never said you could keep your doctor. If you've got health care already, then you can keep your plan if you are satisfied with it. If you like the plan you have, you can keep it. I intend to keep this promise. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. If you like your plan and your doctor, you can keep them. He said it wouldn't raise your premium, even though it did. So why not tell you that polar bears can't swim? Why not tell school kids they're all going to die if we don't pay Al Gore and the UN trillions of dollars in carbon taxes? Well, now because they're losing the debate, and it's been shown in the UN's own numbers that since the mid-90s, the Earth's temperature has actually dropped slightly, that there are natural cycles, they can't deal with those facts. So, all over British and European news, but also here in the U.S., we've seen professors and others come out and call for the arrest of people that question anthropogenic or man-made global warming. And the latest is in the Times of London, with a straight face, one of the biggest papers in England, talks about ministers and the committee in Parliament calling for people to not be allowed, including members of government, to question the, quote, consensus that man-made global warming is not man-made. Well, there is no consensus. In fact, the facade of the consensus is collapsing. The consensus is forming that the only thing that's steady is change itself. If you want to see the article, the headline is Crackdown Ordered on Climate Change Skeptics. That sounds like something out of the old Soviet Union. Then we segue into Al Gore and his new move to produce a Inconvenient Truth Part 2 with new lies for old. Bottom line, we have an authoritarian movement on the so-called left that is seeking to not just tax every form of human activity and track it, but to also silence anyone that would dare challenge it. These people are not liberals. They are out of control authoritarians. But I wanted to reach out to some of the mainline supporters of this who really mean well, and I want to discuss some of the real environmental threats to this planet. Open air genetic engineering of plants for pharmacological crops where viruses and bacteria are mixed into the genetic code of mainline staple food crops that then infect the entire family of, say, corn or canola has been proven in major studies to cross the genetic line into animals and humans that eat it, damaging our DNA. We know that toxic waste dumping is a serious problem. We know that overfishing in many areas is a serious issue. We know that the development of superbugs because of the overuse of antibiotics is threatening not just human life, but much of animal life on this planet. But when you enter into the equation, earth changes and giant asteroids, a two mile across a uh, nickel uh, asteroid would be estimated to be the equivalent of thousands of Hiroshima's or Nagasaki's. And that's something that humans don't have control over. That's something that paying a tax to Al Gore will not fix. Then you enter volcanic and seismic activity. Huge earthquakes from Chile to off the coast of Japan in the last few weeks, as well as California, as the Pacific Rim heats up. But government scientists tell us, don't worry, in the geological record, big events like this only happen every few hundred thousand years and we don't think we're due. They have no idea on the real geological line how often these events really happen. But what we know is many civilizations have been destroyed or damaged by them. We know the world is hit by huge earthquakes and tsunamis on a routine basis, causing tens of thousands to die every single year. But because these are threats that the government can't even pretend to control, they tell us it's no big deal, it's not an issue. I go back to this all the time. Honeybees kill more than 200 people a year in the U.S. alone, more than international terrorism combined. 
but we're not seeing Homeland Security checkpoints out on the road to stop honeybees because it's something that we know is just a risk in the environment inherently, just like earthquakes, just like tsunamis. What do you do to mitigate against earthquakes and tsunamis? You don't live in those zones or you live in a home that is designed to mitigate the danger from living in those zones. The truth is the greatest danger historically is government. In the 20th century, according to the University of Hawaii, 262 million innocents, non-military personnel, were killed by government, were executed, were murdered, in many cases raped and tortured before they were killed. Statistically, it's not earthquakes, it's not asteroids, it's not flesh-eating bacteria, it's not cigarettes, it's not firearms, it's not honeybees, it's not great white sharks that are the danger. They kill five people a year, but everybody's scared of them. No, ladies and gentlemen, it's government taken over by out-of-control criminal interest. And when governments start trying to say, we're not going to let you be pro-Second Amendment, or we're not going to let you promote your views on climate and the fact that the earth is always going through changes. We're going to shut you up. We're not going to let television have you on as guests. That's what they're proposing. You know you're dealing with the real threat that has reared its head throughout history. It's called despotism. It's called oppression. It's called tyranny. And across the world, it's on the march. But for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, to quote Sir Isaac Newton. And there is a response, a sleeping giant of free humanity that is awakening and beginning to move against the tyranny. The future, the destiny of civilization and freedom is in your hands. Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com. Now back to David Knight and the worldwide radio transmission on this Friday edition. We'll be back this Sunday live as well with more live reports and special commentary. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.